Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu salam wa rasulillah I think right now judging on the time we have I wanted to, to forward on to talk about types of magic and in types of magic you can go into a lot of detail and you can say insanity and, and, and breaking up between husband and wife and love and, and many different types of detail but what I actually want you to look at it from is the perspective of the magician in their books how do magicians define magic in their books magic in the books of the magicians is defined divided into two major groups with some subgroups off on the side the two major groups that magic is defined as by the magicians themselves in their books is sarfun wa atf sarfun is to turn someone away from something to repel someone from something to break up husband and wife to cause someone to hate to cause someone to break apart to cause a family to break apart to cause a child to hate their mother to cause someone to turn away or to separate away from someone else so separation dividing pushing people away turning people away but not just people turning the jinn away from people as well this is also a type of sarf in other words they will make a ta'weed that will turn the certain jinn away from others you're being afflicted by the jinn and you go to a magician and you say to the magician there's a jinn who's bothering me he will make you an amulet that will push the jinn away by using other jinn what's the problem with this because he's going to do so by committing kufr and by asking you to support him in committing kufr and by asking you to be involved in committing kufr go and bring me this go and bring me this to be sacrificed hold the knife hold the bird sacrifice it to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. so you would lose your dunya and your akhirah if you had agreed to do so but my point in this is that this separation or the magic of turning away that the magicians talk about we are not just talking about separating between husband and wife between children and their parents but between also separating and pushing repelling things pushing things away from them pushing the jinn away pushing people away pushing things away separating atf is the opposite atf is all about bringing things together bringing things together and this is the second major type of magic that is mentioned in the books of the magicians and yes you can subcategorize it into causing love and into bringing families together and causing you know and supporting conception and all of these other things you can do but essentially what is up it's about bringing things together and bear in mind that magic brings no good but that the magician will encourage the jinn to bring two people together who hated each other or a woman has divorced her husband and he's gone to another woman what will the magician do he will make a charm for repelling the the new wife from the from the first husband and another charm or integrate into the charm bringing the old wife back together with the husband so we have the magic that is to do with repelling and pushing away and the magic that is to do with bringing things together bringing things together that were once apart healing rifts that were once built and they bring no good they bring nothing but evil this thing that they bring it does not come with any good it doesn't end up with a happy family it ends up with all of them separated because Allah Azza wa said the magician will never be successful he will destroy all of the families even when he's trying to bring people together or it will work for a limited amount of time how often do we see people go and get a ta'weed from a magician and they say oh I had relief the jinn left me I feel so much better give them a year give them six months give them two months they'll be back again it didn't work it's gone back it's worse than it was before because the shayateen, the shayateen ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd they are helpers of each other supporters of each other they say come on you've, you've made them happy for a while now come on let's join up and let's make them really miserable it doesn't bring any good the other types of magic that are mentioned in the books of the magician specifically magic to repel magic to bring together 
magic to protect the magician from the jinn and this is a kind of sarf and atf as well it's a, it's a kind of repelling and bringing together that's why i said these are supplementary categories is that what they will do is bring jinn to them which are so-called protectors and push away jinn from them that are there to harm them does it work we just saw the guy whipping himself on the video we saw we heard the story of the magician who lives in a bathtub full of feces <laughs> The magician will never be successful wherever he goes. From the types of sihr that is mentioned in the books of the magicians is medicine. Sihr that has a medical purpose to fix something that went wrong or to, to sort of undo something medically. And this is mentioned. And again, this is more like a kind of bringing together that they will bring the jinn if someone has a bad heart, they will bring the jinn into the person to try to steady the rhythm of the person's heart. And وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى The magician will never ever ever be successful. Whatever they try to do, it's going to fail. And of course the worst kind of separation and the, more, the strongest kind is the magic of killing. And this is mentioned in the books of the magicians. And it's mentioned within the Sunnah as being the magic that was done to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The magic that was done by Labid ibn al-A'asam was magic to kill. Magic to kill. Subhanallah. So we have lots of separate, we have lots of other types of magic and subcategories. But broadly we're looking at repelling things, bringing things together, protection, medicine and killing. And those three are kind of subcategories in a way to a certain extent. And again, the magician mixes. They make a ta'weed that contains this, the magic that is related to separation and a ta'weed that relates to bringing people together. Bring me some jinn, push some others away. Bring me one person, divorce the other one. Break up one family, bring the next family in. This is the kind of stuff that they do. And we're going to learn in the next module, insha'Allah, that each of these type of magic has a specific number associated with it. When you will open the magic charms, you will see the number that is associated. And by counting the numbers or the number of squares or the, number of, uh, the numbers the squares add up to, or by counting the number of needles or the number of pins in the voodoo doll, you will be able to tell what the magic was done for. Example, the number seven is associated with bringing people together. You find a voodoo doll with seven pins. It wasn't done to kill someone and it wasn't done to harm them. It was done to protect them. You find a rope with seven knots. It was done to protect them and it doesn't protect them against anything. Because the magician will never be successful. So each of these has a number associated with it in the books of magic. We went with our Sheikh Adil Muqbil to Cornwall to the Museum of Magic. Subhanallah, we found the same numbers, the same information, the same categories with the magicians in Cornwall as the magicians in Saudi Arabia. And we saw videos from Indonesia and the same numbers with the magicians in Indonesia and the same in Africa and the same in South America. Kufr is one religion, Ya Ikhwan. Kufr is one religion. And you can divide it if you like into this and this and this, but Kufr is one religion in the end of the day. There are two religions, there is Islam and there is disbelief. The magicians cooperate, ba'aduhum awliya ba'd. They cooperate with each other in this field. We've talked quite a lot about how one becomes a magician and we've shown you a good number of the videos. I would like to show you uh, a couple more that I think it's a good idea for us to show now. One regarding fortune telling. I'm going to just pop this over here. And this one is all to do with fortune telling. So it's showing, and this is in Cornwall, we took the video. It's showing the instruments that are used for fortune telling. Look what is written above the pan on the top left corner. They, it's, a, it's a pan with a mirror in it and they use it as a, as a reverse mirror for you to see your future in the mirror and you don't see anything of the future and they simply mix the lies that they hear from the heavens. But this pan, what is written around it? Jibrail, Mikail, Israfil, Azrael. 
go and open any ta'weed from the ta'weed of the Muslims. And this is in a non-Muslim museum. It's written in English. Gabriel, Michael, Azrael, Israfil. The names of the angels are written around exactly the same as the ta'weed that your so-called sheikh gives you from the masjid. Exactly the same. The fortune tellers. The mirror, you, they're supposed to show you their future in it. There's a pan in the bottom corner. That pan is for burning the coals. And they throw the coals down and whatever the picture the coals make, they tell you what is going to be in your future. They use it to find things that have got lost. They ask the jinn, where is this car that was stolen? And so what they do is they bring ashes, they burn paper or they burn charcoal and they mix the ashes up or they read in the tea leaves and they say that this has happened. This is a type of sihr, ya ikhwan. This is a type of sihr that the Prophet wasallam said, whoever goes to a fortune teller and he does not believe in him, he doesn't accept it. He goes just to see what he's going to do. His prayer is not accepted for 40 days. You read your horoscope just for a laugh. Your prayer is not accepted for 40 days. You go to watch a magician on stage, just let's see, we don't believe in it, alhamdulillah, we're Muslim. Your salah is not accepted for 40 days. And if you believe in him, فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. He disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad. If you believe in the fortune teller, you disbelieve in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you read it for entertainment, your prayer is not accepted for 40 days. And this same thing, Ya Ikhwan, from the English Museum, from the same place, the same people. You want to see what a magician does? Let's have a look at this video of what this magician does. Let's have a look at, first of all, this thing that you can see here, I'm going to, I'm going to pause it. I'm just going to pass it across. It's very difficult to see. It's very bright on my screen and it's a bit dull on the, on the uh, monitor. But here, what is here is there is a stone. And written on it is what? The same stones that are mentioned in the Harry Potter book found being used by magicians to come close to the shaitan. The same stones that are used in the books of Harry Potter that they mention, the stone of life and the stone, the same stone description used by the magicians to come near to the shaitan. So you want your children to become magicians? You let them watch Harry Potter. They'll learn a great deal about how to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's not what I wanted to show you more than anything from this video. What I wanted to show you is, and I hope we can see it, and subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's actually, Allah <laughs> musta'an, it's, it's not befitting to show in a masjid. And subhanAllah, we, we only complain to Allah azza wa jal. I will try to take away some of the worst of it. But this is the use of fahisha, the use of filth and immorality and sexual intercourse to come near to the shaitan. And I'm going to try to find, if I can, there are in this video, there are pictures of male genitalia that the magicians use in coming near to the shaitan. These are some of the idols of the shayateen that they use to come near to the shaitan, some of the faces of the shaitan that they make to bring themselves near to the shaitan. And likewise, on this same display, there are these, here we go, these images of male genitalia that they use to insert into somebody as a part of the magic. These people have, they don't, like Allah says, لا يرقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة. They don't respect Iman, they don't respect your family, they don't respect anything. The only thing these people respect, the only thing they do is to worship the shaitan and to disbelieve in Allah Azza wa Jal. Can you imagine that when you go to that so-called pious person to give you a ta'weed, he puts the ta'weed inside of an image of a male genitalia and he uses it for what he uses it for. And don't think that he uses it on women either. From Alistair Crowley that we know that Alistair Crowley said, this magician, that he said, I didn't become a magician until I practiced homosexuality. They're not content with zina. Zina, that's for, zina is for people who might repent. For a magician, it's not zina. It's incest, it's homosexuality, it's child abuse. This is what magicians do. They have no limit. لا يرقبون في مؤمن إلا ولا ذمة. There's no limit to, there's no degree of respect, there's no, uh, there's no limit for what the magician will do. 
And you know, in some ways, you know, subhanAllah, some of this stuff, you, it's some of the worst stuff you can't, you couldn't show it in a masjid. It's that bad. You could not show it in a masjid. Subhanallah, what they would do, pictures of naked women, and they would write Allah where the genitalia of the woman would be. And these pictures are here on the computer, but we're not going to show them in the masjid because we are shy to show this image in the masjid. A picture of a naked woman and where her genitalia would be is written the name Allah. From a magician who may not have even been a Muslim, as in may not have even attributed himself to Islam or known Islam. But all of the magicians, when they hear about Islam, they know how to practice their magic in disgracing uh, the Quran and so on and so forth. Let's just have a quick look at a magician in a cave who is practicing his magic and what he does. Again, this magician was caught and he was asked to show the magic that he did. You can see him here with triangles and candles. Candles are another me means that the magicians use. He has the candles here, he has circles, he's going to sit himself inside the circle and he's going to burn the candles in order to come close to the shaitan. And he's going to mention the names. And you know what they say they did? They said, we were told to go and sit in the cave, like this. And we wanted to come close to Allah. They said, say la ilaha illallah 10,000 times at night. So he started, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. He came back, he said, Shaykh, I couldn't say it 10,000 times. They said, you're not a wali from the awliya of Allah. You're not close enough to Allah. You do it again. He said, I couldn't say it. I tried to say La ilaha illallah 10,000 times. Fajr came before. And by the way, he mentioned here when he sits in this cave, he's commanded not to pray. And he's commanded to urinate and defecate in the circle and sit in his own urine and his own feces while he's lighting the candles and he's asking them to bring them the, to, to the shayateen to come. Then what happens, like we said, he sat himself in this, uh, in this circle and he's doing what he is, uh, he's doing with these candles here. You can see him sitting in the middle and he's doing this filth that he's doing. Subhanallah. They tell him to say, La ilaha illallah 10,000 times. He says, I can't do it. They say, okay, we'll give you a way that you can do it. Just say, who? And this will be La ilaha illallah. So what does he do? Exactly what the mutasawwifah do. He sits in a cave and he says, Who, 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 who. Until they say, until the revelation of Allah descends upon him. But it's not the revelation of Allah. It's the shayateen. Look at him sitting with his back there uncovered. And he's sitting in worship of the shaytan. This was not a Muslim. This particular one was not a Muslim. He was not the one that was saying Allahu. But this particular one was not a Muslim. But he's doing exactly what the Sufiya do. Word by word, step by step. Look, read the books of the awliya of the Sufiya. What did the awliya of the Sufis do? We went into a cave and we sat in a circle and we began to say Allahu, Allahu, who, 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 who. Until the shaitan came. Sihr, sihr. Magic, magic. Disgracing the name of Allah, disgracing the name of Allah. And if we want to just have the ultimate, the ultimate one, and wallahi this is, I suggest if you have a weak stomach that you don't watch this. Because this is some of the so-called awliya of Allah. See what they do. Have a look and see what this guy is going to do. The first thing, he's bringing a miskeen who is possessed and the shaykh is going to cure him by the evil that they do. He's putting a sword into his face. He's just stabbed him in the face with a sword. The Sheikh, the so-called pious Sheikh, has stabbed this man in the face with a sword. Look at this miskeen man. And this so-called pious, look at them, they're Muslim, they're wearing, their, they're wearing their Muslim clothes. These people are people who say that they are Muslim. Look at what he's going to do to him. It's not enough. He's got a problem in his stomach. So he's going to stab him in the stomach with the sword. He says he's so pious that he can stab the jinn. And he stabs him in the stomach and in the face. And of course they use a very thin blade that, that, that doesn't obviously cause a... They don't have the ability to heal him, they just use such a thin blade that he misses the major organs so it doesn't kill him. 
and then they're reciting over him and they're saying if he stays like this the jinn will be cured subhanallah look at what we do we sit and recite the quran over a person look at what the mutasawwifah this is one of the major shuyukh of the sufis look at what he does he says now you're going to be better you've been stabbed now you're going to be better but that's not the end of it unfortunately lil asaf that's not the end of it this is the sheikh he has this is the pious sheikh he has a tube in his stomach he's extracting feces from his stomach he's extracting his own material his own waste material he's extracting his own waste material and I want you just to hear watch what the man is gonna do Wallahi ya ikhwan, this is the reality of the magician. This is the reality of the magician. This is the holy man from the mutasawifah, the holy man who is from the greatest awliya of Allah according to them. He takes out feces from his own stomach and the people eat his feces. And they say that this is a wali from the awliya of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the magician does what he does and they come close to the people Wallah, kufr is one religion, what, no matter whether they attribute themselves to Islam or not. And remember, it's not enough for the magician to do shirk. It's not enough. Don't make this clear in your mind. It is not enough for the magician to do shirk. The magician has to get the other people to do shirk. Why is that so-called wali such a powerful, so-called powerful sahir? Why? Because look how many followers he has. Look how many people he misguides. How many Muslims come to him for help. That's where he gets his strength from. Not from himself, but from him in encouraging other people to worship other than Allah Azza wa Jal. This is about... In reality, this is not the worst of the videos that we have. But we had to set a limit to what we're willing to show here. But there are worse and worse and worse. And some of you will have seen it. And it's absolutely unbelievable. What we're going to do now is we're just, we're not even going to take a break. We're just going to fall straight into the final uh, series or the final part, which is regarding the amulets and the talismans and the magical symbols. And we're going to try to, if you like, educate you guys regarding the, what the amulets and the talismans actually mean and what each of the things in them uh, signify bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. We're going to start, <coughs> inshallah, at the start and we're going to try and take as much benefit from the various different slides as we are able to do. Uh, we saw on the previous lecture examples of amulets and there's no doubt that amulets in general we can divide the rulings of amulets into different types those that are of the Quran and those that are not of the Quran as for any amulet that is not of the Quran if the person believes it benefits them and harms them besides Allah they leave Islam and if they believe that it has no benefit to them but they wear it anyway then they've committed the worst of the major sins i.e. they have not reached the level of shirk but they've committed one of the major sins in terms of an innovation that's if they don't believe it has any benefit at all as for that which is of the Quran the correct opinion is that there is no difference between that which is of the Quran and that which is not of the Quran and inshallah ta'ala will post an article on this later on because we are very short on time here's example of hair wrapped up in a kind of a like a coil over rope here we have shoes that have the sihr stitched inside of them. Here we have um, examples of, ta of, of, of amulets and talismans and we're going to show some more examples of those later. Here we have some more and here this was written inside a material and sewn inside women's clothing. So the, they had a time in Riyadh where what was happening was a number of women were becoming very sick and they thought that there was a plague and they traced this plague back it wasn't a plague it was a sahir who had sown magic into a number of abaya abayat 
uh, like uh, women's abaya and they had given the abayat and sold them in the market and so the hayat al-amr bil ma'roof and nahyan al-munkar were able to go and to, re and to recall those things have examples of pouches metal containers locks and keys that have the magic built into them dead birds dead animals this is the tooth or the the foot of something or other this is an example of magic that is to be burnt so it's inside of it there are papers each paper says burn at a certain time burn at a certain time we're going to cover the ruling on that and how to dispose of it in a moment this is another example of papers that are uh, that have been opened and what's inside notice these symbols and signs we're going to learn what they mean insha'Allah ta'ala the person's name is written here you see Sa'ad the person's name is written there and the person's name is written there and inside there are each of these uh, these uh, symbols these symbols here have a particular name they're known as a seal as in S-E-A-L a seal as in a, a khatam, a seal, something you seal them by. And they're called the seal of the magician. Khatam as-sahir. Khatam as-sahir. An example of incense that is to be burnt and papers that are to be burnt alongside the incense. This is an example of some that are hung. Uh, this is an example of papers put in water and the water is given to a person to drink. And this may be with their knowledge or without their knowledge. They may come to them and say to them, put this paper in, mix it in the water, drink a bit of the water every day. The same things are written just like this, these kind of symbols and signs. And we're going to learn what those symbols and signs mean, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is an example of things which are not sihr, but they are beliefs that people have. You tie a black cloth and it protects your car, you tie something to the front of your car and it protects it from accidents. This is an example of belief that lead people into sihr. These things that are hung from these are the hands of Fatima. This is an example of sihr sewn into clothing. If one of the brothers could just move the projector slightly so we're catching, because at the moment we're catching a little bit of the left hand side. Just slightly, ever so slightly so that we catch the middle of it. That's spot on. So there we have clothing that has the sihr and the amulets drawn and stitched into the clothing. Here, this one is stitched into clothing as well. Look at squares, symbols, talismans, amulets, locks. People say, I mean, when you talk about magic developing, magic doesn't really develop in the sense that the same magic is done that is done that has always been done and that was taught and that the people learned. But of course they find new ways to implement it. So instead of tying knots, they may use padlocks. And they will tie the knots around the padlock. So they will tie the padlock, and around the padlock they will tie the requisite number of knots. Eggs. These are eggs that have writing on. These eggs are either to be smashed, or they're to be put in a certain place. Every number, the number of eggs and the numbers written on the eggs has a meaning. And we're going to learn it insha'Allah ta'ala. Rings, the inside of that brass ring has got some of the names of the shayateen written inside of it. And we're going to talk about how to destroy that because you can't burn it, it won't, it won't go away. Here we have some incense. This is mixed of various different kinds of incense. Some of it we use in the masjid. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when the incense, there's nothing wrong with the incense that is used when the intention is to perfume. But incense to bring the shaitan, to draw away the shaitan, this is from the types of incense that is used in magic. Birds, notice here, the bird has the talisman tied to its foot and it's left to fly in the air and the person will suffer wherever the bird lands and however the bird flies, the person will begin to suffer from it. This is the same example of the one that was inserted into the private parts of the woman who is menstruating in order to disgrace the Quran and the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. The description of the magician is briefly mentioned here. The magician, you know, sitting in places of filth and unclean places, disgracing the Quran, doing immorality, uh, having an evil smell and so on and so forth. He is uh, appearing to be a pious person. 
He's eating the, or devouring the wealth of the people in falsehood and he's claiming for himself rububiyyah, one of the signs of the magician. And again, you may find these in all magicians, you may find in some magicians. You may not find every sif, every description in every magician. This is very, very, very important. This is talking about the stars and astrology. Do not see them as completely separate things. Fortune telling and astrology has a key part to play in regular magic. We're going to see this is the, the star signs and each of the star signs is associated with an element of the earth. And I want you to write this down. Each of the star signs is associated with an element of the earth. Uh, one of the four elements, sorry. Four elements are earth, fire, air, water. Each star sign is associated with one of those four elements. This is not true. This is all complete rubbish. But this is what the magicians use. Just because you're born in a time when you're supposed to be fiery, doesn't mean you're fiery. Alhamdulillah, we don't take these omens. We say, oh Allah, there is no omen except from you and there is no good except from you. And there is no God worthy of worship except for you. But this is what the magicians do. This is the knowledge they have. They divide people into one of the four elements, earth, fire, air and water. And they adjust their magic according to the elements. We're going to see how in a moment. Here we have palm reading, reading the tea leaves, another form of fortune telling, throwing the seeds, seashells, throw the seashells, however they land, they determine the issue that you're asking about. Date seeds uh, and likewise cardamom seeds. Using them, they throw them, they look at how they make the pattern and they tell the future from it. Reading sand, pictures in the sand, pictures in the ashes. They make, they burn coal and they throw the coal over the person and how it appears, they then say, yes, you're going, this is going to happen to you and that is going to happen to you and they lie. The candles, white, red and green, these colors are very significant. They use them regularly. Red associated with love associated with bringing people together bear that in mind red is associated with love and with bringing people together because we're going to cover that in a moment yeah they have white and they have green these are the star signs according to how the magicians divide them into fire water air and earth so they divide three into fire and three into water three into air and three into earth. These are some of the beliefs people have, the hand of Fatima and so on and so forth. It's not magic in of itself. And this is very important because many of the amulets you're going to see are not going to be magic of themselves, but they are going to be a means to seek nearness to the shaitan and a means to weaken the person's iman. This hand of Fatima does not contain sihr by the meaning of the word, but what it contains is a belief that this hand will protect you besides Allah Azza wa Jal. Once you believe that, you're open for any magic to attack you because you no longer have your shield of Tawheed. Here we have some stitched into some fur and material and various other different things. Right, now we begin to understand how the magician writes the amulets. The first thing, guys, I want you to write down. Not every magician can write. Not every magician can write and calculate. There are magicians who do things the literate way and magicians who do things the illiterate way. Okay? So there are magicians that do things by writing and magicians that do things the simple way, the village way, like they call it, they call them village magicians here in England, the witch of the village or the witch of the town, they don't write. But they have alternatives to the writing. And the alternatives are based on the same system. Here, brothers, you can see a table. And I'll just mention the table quickly to you so that you can, if you don't have it, uh, you can sort of keep it in mind. Alif is equal to 1, Ba is equal to 2, Jim 3, Dal 4, Ha 5, Wow 6, Zai 7, Ha 8, Ta 9, Ya 10, Kaf 20, Lam 30, Meme 40, Noon 50. 
Sin 60. Ayn 70. Fa 80. Sad 90. Qaf 100. Ra 200. Sheen 300. Ta 400. Tha 500. Kha 600. Dal 700. Dad 800. Dha 900. Ghain 1000. We'll inshallah show you a copy of this later on. Don't worry about it, inshallah. What do the magicians do with this? Why am I telling you this for the first time? I'm not telling you so that you get all amazed about what the magicians do or so that you say, oh, at least now I have a backup career if my existing career fails. No. I'm telling you so that you can understand what these things mean. These ta'awid, these circles with these numbers in, what they mean. This is what they mean. What is your proof, O Muhammad? Are you reading books of the magicians again? No, 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 no. My proof is from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that Ibn Abbas said there are a people who write abajad alif ba jim dal abjad hawaz abjad hawaz abjad hawaz hutti kalim there are a people who write Abajad, look at the knowledge of Ibn Abbas, look at how he understands. A people who write Abajad, they write Abjad Hawaz, Hutti Kalim, and then so on and so forth. So the first row, Abjad Hawaz, Hutti Kalim. People who write Abajad, what do they do with Abajad? They look up in the stars. What did he say? يَنْظُرُونَ فِي النُّجُومِ مَا أَرَى مِنْ فِعْلِ ذَلِكَ لَهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ خَلَاقَ I do not believe that this person has any reward in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal for anything that they do. Subhanallah. What is this action Ibn Abbas is describing? Abjad and then looking at the stars. This is the essence of what the magicians do to perform their magic. Ibn Abbas understood the essence of what the magicians do to perform their magic. What do they do? The first thing they do is they take your name and what do they take along with it? Your mother's name. Your name and your mother's name. Your name and your mother's name. And between the two they write bin, ba noon, not ibn, bin, ba noon. Girl, boy, they don't care. Magicians don't recognize male and female in this regard. Everyone, male or female, they write bin, ba, noon. So they write your name, bin, and then your mother's name, whether you're male or female. What do they do? For each letter, they calculate its value. For each letter, they calculate its value. So bin, for example, I think is 52. And they add that on. They add them all together and they come up with a number. So let's just look as an example of someone who doesn't exist. Muhammad ibn Aisha. Muhammad ibn Aisha. Someone get their phone out, get their calculators out. Muhammad ibn Aisha. Muhammad, they take the meme. Where's the meme on there? 40. Put 40 down. Then they take the ha, 8. It's 48. Then they take the meme, that's 40, so we have 88. Then they take the dal, and that's 4, which gives us 92. Then they add 52 for bin. Okay? So now we have 144. Then they take Aisha, Ain, 70. Alif and Hamza, they do exactly the same. So one for the A, one, okay, so 71. And then they take the Hamza again, another one. A, I, Hamza again, another one. And then they take the Sheen, which is 300. And then they take the Ha, Tamarbuta, which is the Ha, which is five. Anyone add those up? 500 and? 21. Add that to 144. Do we say 144? What do you get? 665. 665. 
So the number that is produced by the magician for Muhammad ibn Aisha, 665. What does the magician do? He continues to divide it by 12 until he gets a number between 1 and 12. He continues to divide it by 12 until he gets a number that produces a number between 1 and 12. So the first time he divides it, what does he get? He divides 665 by 12, what do you get? 55. Then he divides it again by 12. 4.6. 6 and above, not 5 and above, 6 and above, they round up. 5 and below, they round down. 6 and above, they round it up. So what do they get? 5. So here we have this miskeen person who the person is going to do sihr on them. He has the number 5. And then they go back, 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 back. <coughs> to the chart of the elements and they begin to count one, two, three, four, five and they come up, they start uh, it's not clear on the picture, we show you in a moment where they start and they come to five five, they come up with it and they say for example I'll give you an example they say, it's difficult to see on there they say that five is, maybe that says earth I can't see, it's very very difficult to see in any case, they say earth what are they going to do when they come up with earth? Who knows? What are they going to do when they come up with earth? Where are they gonna, what are they going to do with the ta'weez? Bury it in the ground, bury it in the grave, bury it in the soil. This was found buried partially in the soil. Why is it buried in the soil? Because the calculation of the person it worked out as was Turabi, someone who was a soil person, an earth person, or in the sand or in the grave. If they're a person of fire, what are they going to do with it? Put bukhur, put incense and burn it. If they're a person of water, what are they going to do with it? Put it in water, in the sewer, in the toilet, in the water, in the sea, in the river. If they, and so on and so forth. If they're a person of air, what did we see in the previous videos? The bird, or hang it on a tree so that it blows in the wind. This is the action of the magicians. And I'm just giving you a brief overview. There's more to learn than that, but that gives you a brief overview. This set of numbers is very important for deciphering the ta'weed. You can open the ta'weed. And the numbers refer to names and they refer to, they refer to names and they refer to letters. So we can take these corners that have the numbers in and we can say the first number that we have is the number one. So this is a number one is an alif or a hamza. And then after that, these are somewhat, somewhat difficult to read because we were arguing over what the numbers were. We have uh, what I think is an 8. So we have a ha, or it may be a, uh, it may be a 6, which is a wow. And then they have at the front what looks like a 7, which is a zai. So they have here za or zao, depending on whatever they're writing. These are names of the shayateen that they come to see close to the shaytan in every ta'weel. Take this number chart, start decoding it. Sometimes there are number charts that are different from this one. We're going to look at some of them, but as you learn, you'll learn more. Don't go around asking people for their names and their mother's names so you work out whether they're buried in the earth. They'll think you're a magician. But just in general, it gives you, you know, it just gives you an idea. Sometimes the magician gets it wrong. It's said in a weak narration, and Allah knows best in a weak narration, that the Labid ibn al-A'asam calculated Muhammad sallallahu name wrong. He calculated as Muhammad ibn Halima and not Muhammad ibn Aminah. It's said in a weak narration. Weak narration is not authentic. If that's true, they said that's why the sihr didn't work. And Allah Azza wa knows best and it didn't work because Allah Azza wa didn't will it to work. But it's sometimes, it, does, it is genuinely true that there are times when the magician gets it completely wrong. But in general, this is how they do, this is how they do their work. These are what the numbers mean, in general. We went to Cornwall, we found the same numbers in the English Museum. With the English equivalents, A was 1, B was 2, uh, J or C was 3, D was 4, H was 5, W was 6. So on and so forth. The same numbers, the same codes written, one of them we found, the same names of the shayateen that are written in this ta'weed here. We found the same names 
written on top of male genitalia with blood dropping out of it in a, in a Dutch magician's house. Never seen, heard of Islam. And he writes the names of the shayateen, the same names, and he writes them in this to cause the person not to be fertile, to cause the person to uh, become infertile. So he wrote it a male genitalia and inside he wrote the same nine boxes and in each one he wrote a code, the same thing here, one of the names of, or three of the names of the shayateen in order to bring them near to the shaytan. Let's look for a second at the next list. This one is the same letters but each this time we have symbols. Can you see there are kind of funny symbols? So along with Alif, Alif kind of looks like a straight line. But if you look at Dal, Dal looks like the Arabic word Ala. Ala. There's something that looks like a mushroom or an umbrella, which is representing Ha. Why am I showing this to you guys? So that you recognize that on the Ta'weez, they may not write the symbols in Arabic letters. They may write them in this code. This is called Al Qalam al Rouhani. Why is it called Rouhani? They believe that every ayah from the Mubtadi'ah, we said who is carrying the knowledge in Islam? The people of Bid'ah. What do they say? They say that every ayah has a spirit, a guardian spirit, a rohani. Every ayah has a guardian spirit. And when you disgrace the ayah or you call upon the ayah, they say call upon the ayah, but in reality they disgrace it. What do they do? They believe the guardian spirit of the ayah comes to serve them. Shayateen, jinn. But this is what they believe. We write Ayatul Kursi in a certain way with these numbers and the guardian spirit of Ayatul Kursi who is in reality a jinn from the Shayateen will come and he will serve me when I write Ayatul Kursi in a certain way. That's what they believe. Al Qalam al Ruhani, the symbols they believe in. These symbols are present in the Ta'weed. We can go back to these Ta'weed that we showed you before. The same symbols are there for you to see in the same way that they were before. We can go back and flick through some of the symbols, some of the ta'aweed that we saw uh, before. Um, and the same kind of symbols are there. See the same symbols, same symbols. Here, same symbols. Here, same symbols. Same symbols are coming again and again and again. Here, same symbols, same symbols, same symbols. Magic is one religion. It's not the only way that they do it, but this is by far and means all of their methods come back to this. All of their methods come back to this method. So they may develop other alternatives, but they all come back to this same method. We found in the museum, in the Cornish Museum of Magic, some alternative letterings from these. But the same numbers, the same letters, but just different ways of writing them. So sometimes they write Alif with a box and Ba with a triangle, but it's the same concept, the same letters, the same names of the shayateen that are coming out in the end of it. Here we have this. This is written in Al Qalam Al Rouhani, in the same code. This here is written in this code. Do you know what this is? Hadi Khatam Surat Yaseen. Allahu Musta'an. They tried to write Surah Yaseen. Surah Yaseen. What do they say? They say, we have, a, we have Allah's greatest name. I'm going to write Allah's greatest name for you. And they write these symbols and these letters. And they say, this is Allah's greatest name. It's not Allah's greatest name, it's the Shaitan's name. And it's not his, none of his names are great. This is Surah Yaseen. Surah Yaseen. And they have written Surah Yaseen so that you read it from left to, to right. It reads each box is a word from one of the ayahs of Surah Yaseen. And the, it says, the top one says, if we do the, just the left hand corner, it says, فَمِنْهَا And the bottom one says, وَمِنْهَا يأكلون. The same decoding we just did, same thing. If you were to take your time to decode it, this one would say, فَمِنْهَا and this one would say, وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ Who memorized Surah Yaseen can tell me what the missing word is? رُكُوبَهُمْ Rukubahum, huh? رُكُوبَهُمْ 
وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ This word that is supposed to be here, here, in this box is supposed to be the missing word between فَمِنْهَا وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ It's supposed to be the missing word here, but it isn't. It is a name from the names of the shaitan. And I can't remember what this one was. It was something really, really weird. Wajadadad. Wajadadad. Faminha wajadadad. Wa minha yaakulun. Why? Why would a magician write this? What is he doing? What does every magician do? Disgrace the Quran. He's disgracing the Quran by inserting words. You say, how can you disgrace the Quran by inserting words? وَإِذْ قُلْنَ دَخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةِ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَدَخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةً نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاهُ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ What did Allah Azza wa Jal say to Bani Israel when we said enter into the village and eat from it wherever you wish and enter the door in prostration and say حِطَّةً and some of the ulama, they say hitta means wipe out my sins. What did Bani Israel say when they went through the door? Hinta. Hinta. Instead of hitta, they said hinta. What's the difference between hitta and hinta? One letter. One letter they change in the ta'weed. One letter. And they disgrace the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what they're doing here. One word. Rukubuhum, supposed to be here. Wajadadadad. One of the names of the shaitan or disgracing the Quran. And it's written all the way along. So the ayah, this is another part of the ayah of Surah Yasin at the end. And in the middle again, wajadadadadad. Disgracing the ayat of the Quran. This was given to a person and said, hang it in your house. It is Surah Yasin and it will protect you. Now we come on to the most common form of magic to repel. Sarf, magic to repel. This is called Al-Muthallath Al-Ghazali. It's alleged to have come from Al-Imam Al-Ghazali and we believe that Al-Imam Al-Ghazali is free from this. Because whatever you say about Al-Imam Al-Ghazali and he made a lot of tawbah towards the latter part of his life regarding the ilm al-kalam that he fell into, but Al-Imam Al-Ghazali was free from this. This is absolute kufr. From the worst form of kufr. All of the magic of sarf comes back to this. All of the magicians who teach breaking families and breaking people apart, they teach it through this. Nine squares. Write down the number nine. Nine squares. Same one you showed me on your phone. Everyone's getting the Muthalath al-Ghazali out now. So like, a lot of you will have seen this before. The numbers will add up normally to 9 or 15. 276, 816, 357, 951, 438. The story of this is it was said to have been found in India by Imam al-Ghazali. And they add up to 15 and sometimes they add up to 9. And the number 9 is there and the, because there are 9 squares and the number 15 is there. What do these numbers work out? If we go back to the Abjad Hawaz, Hutti, Kalim, what do we work out? Number 2 is? Number 2 is? Ba. Number 9 is? Ta. Number 4? Dal. So we have the first name from one of the muluk of the jinn, one of the kings of the jinn, and his name is Batad. What does the magician do who wants to do this who can't write? He wants to call upon Batad, this shaitan. He wants him to do work for him. He wants him to send his soldiers. So he tries to write Batad, but he can't write. What does he do? He takes the knot and he says Batad, Batad, Batad. So he does the same thing, the same magic, but he does it by saying the name over the knot and blowing upon the knot. Number seven, Zai 
Number five, Ha. Number three, Jim. Zahaj. Another name from the names of the shayateen. So the person who wants to break up between husband and wife, he takes his knots, he makes his knots like this. He takes his knots and he makes his knots. Let me see if I can borrow this for a moment. He takes his knots and he ties his knots and he ties it tight and he says, Batad, Zahaj, Wa. And then he ties another knot. How many knots is he going to tie? Nine or 15. Nine or 15 knots. Over each knot, he's going to mention the names of those shayateen. As an alternative to writing down the things that he's going to write down. This was given to me today and I had no idea about it. I heard about it last night and I didn't ask them to bring it. The brothers brought it for me. Six of Al Muthallath Al Ghazali found in dirt. Why are they found in dirt? Because the person they calculated his name to be a person who was Turabi. He was uh, associated with dirt. And the, here we have the numbers, all of them, or most of them, adding up to 15. The same thing, the same names of the same shayateen. Look through your phones and more, a lot of you have got experience of magic before you'll find the same stuff. We're going to go through some amulets in a moment. Now we come on to the number seven. And the number seven, do you remember what we said about Babylon? Who remembers about what we said about Babylon, the ancient magic of Babylon? The seven stars of Babylon. These are the seven stars of Babylon. And again, each of the seven stars of Babylon has a symbol and each of the symbols corresponds to a letter from the Arabic language. So what does the person do who wants to do the sihr who he can't write? He says, Ah, tam fashad, ah, tam fashad, ah, tam fashad. And he blows on the knots. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّثَاتِ فِي الْأُقَدْ you will see these in your ta'weeth. Go through your phones and all the ta'weeth that you have. If it was done for protection, bringing people together, causing you to love someone, you'll find on it, ahtam fashad, or the numbers that calculate to ahtam fashad, or the symbols that calculate to ahtam fashad. Same symbols, same system. There are seven symbols, seven stars of Babylon. Each one of the symbols represents one of the stars. And each one of some of the kings or the leaders of the jinn has what? A name that corresponds to one of the seven stars of Babylon. MashaAllah, these, they, they don't stop, SubhanAllah. They name themselves after the seven stars of Babylon. So that when you want to call upon them, you can call upon all seven or you can call upon one of them. وَيَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَلَا they call upon other than Allah that which doesn't benefit them and it doesn't harm them, subhanAllah. Look at what they do. So here they have these symbols and these characters here. And the characters they meet, so you have Lam, Mim, Qaf, Fa, Noon, Jim, Lam. That's another alternative lettering. And you'll see that in a moment, what it corresponds to. So here we have these names of these shayateen. The first name of the shayateen is, and I can't pronounce them, Lat Hatil. That's the first one. The second star of Babylon, the shaitan who has taken his name after it is Hat Hatil, Hat Yatil, Hat Batil, Ha Hat Tatil, Hat Latil, Ha Tatil. And all of the numbers and the letters calculate to the same table of letters, the same symbols, and it's the same names of the shayateen. So you open up a ta'weed and you see lah tatil, qah tatil, mah tatil, tah tatil. It was done to preserve somebody, to make someone love somebody through the seven stars of Babylon. It's not complicated, ya ikhwan. These people are stupid. It's not complicated, but they have their system. And wallah, I said to you, ikhwan, we took Shaykh Adil al-Muqbil, hafizahullah, to Cornwall. And the same thing in the English magic in Cornwall, the same thing. The same names, the same stars, the same symbols. We said, where is this from? He said, it's from a village in Devon. Not from the Arabian Peninsula, or whatever his name is. He has a presence in a village in Devon from a people who grew up in Christianity and some of them were pagans. Subhanallah, Kufr is one religion. 
So here is the table of these shayateen and the net letters they write. So when you find these broken up letters, these broken up letters are not just random. They're intended to spell one of the names of the shaytan or they're intended to give you numbers and the numbers calculate to a number related to sihr. And they're written inside of a seal, a khatam. Might be a triangle, might be a circle, might be a square. We're going to develop this and look at it in a moment. This is an example of putting it in a well, putting it in the sea, and they did this in Jeddah, subhanAllah. They dredge the sea in Jeddah after every hajj. They dredge the sea in Jeddah after every hajj. They send divers out and they bring back sihr. I don't know if I can even play it. They bring back, uh, not from here, but I might play it for you in a moment. They bring back sihr, piles and piles and piles of sihr. People came to hajj, and they put sihr in the sea in Jeddah. Why? Because they want to get closer to disgracing the word of Allah Azza wa I want to do it in Makkah. I want the people of Makkah to feel, I want the shayateen to appreciate how much I hate the religion of Allah Azza wa In the air, on the foot of a bird, tied to a pole, tied to a tree. Of course, the, I asked the shaykh regarding the ignorant magician, the one who can't write. Does he do earth and air and water? Perhaps the shaitan tells him where to put it and perhaps he doesn't do it at all. Some of them will just put everything in the ground because they're not learned. But the ones who are more learned, they will try to make their sihr more effective by putting it in the place where it affects the person. And all of it is batil, all of it is lies. We're not earth and fire and water. Allah Azza wa Jal created us from what He created us from and it is known and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows how the people are affected and afflicted. But the magicians, this is the belief that they hold. Now we have some numbers, Ya Ikhwan. The number of knots or the number of pins or the number of eggs or the number of stars or the number of whatever else they have or the number of squares or the numbers that add up or the letters that add up to numbers in the squares. What is each one for? How is each one uh, done? We said that seven was related to the seven stars of Babylon, was done to protect. Nine was done to harm, to drive people away, to break up between husband and wife. Eleven was done to kill. Eleven was done to kill. Three was done for medicine medicinal purposes and usually for the sahir himself he has a bad back so he ties three knots three numbers three letters which works out to the name of one shaitan made up of three letters and three numbers it's all it's all interlinked five to protect the magician from the shaitan and it doesn't protect him from anything and 15 we said is the same as what number nine, nine. 15 is the same as nine so if you find the ta'weev let's count here we have squares made up of nine and we have all sorts of little pictures and squares made up of nine and each of the numbers either add up to nine or they add up to 15. So this was done to separate between a person, to break up a family, to send some jinn away. What do you do if you find a mix of numbers? Seven and nine together. We said they can, the, the, the seven is for a reason and the nine is for a reason. The seven is to bring the girl he loves to him and the nine is to make his wife leave him. And like this the magicians do. Three for medicine, five for protection, seven uh, for, sorry, five for protecting the magician himself, seven for bringing people together, causing love, bringing people into each other, nine to tear people apart, 11 to kill. And the 11 that was to kill, if you can see this picture, I'll try to zoom it for you if I can. It's a picture of a comb. And it's tied 11 times with 11 knots and the hair from the comb, the mishata, is tied 11 times. This is the example of the mishtwa mishata that was done to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Azza wa knows best. 11 knots with his hair from his beard and his head sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his comb tied the comb is separated into 11 separated groups and each one is tied with 11 knots and the hair is tied around and Allah Azza wa knows best the number of knots we don't have a firm proof for it but 
we know that Mishwa Mishata and from the experience when we found Mishwa Mishata before, we found that these combs are tied 11 times with 11 knots and it's to kill uh, a person. And they can't harm anyone except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we come to how do you destroy each of the ta'awith? And I know this is probably going to perhaps for certain brothers cause a degree of controversy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say what I'm telling you now is what Sheikh Adil bin Tahir al-Muqbil told me. And the Sheikh has spent his entire life opening magic. And his entire, you know, subhanAllah, that's his job day in, day out. His job is to find magicians and open magic. <coughs> so what I'm going to tell you is what the Sheikh told us. That's it. Okay? Can I ask a very quick question about this topic before we move on? Um, so this is almost like a code of conduct, is it? Where they're kind of signing this kind of contract and they're making this, this amulet or this, this uh, that wheeze. But, I mean, why, why do they care? Why do they have to abide by this? Why, why can the magic be bro broken by destroying a bit of paper? So why do they have to abide by this? Yeah, I mean, like, if the Shaolin are intent on destroying someone, why do they even bother? But why do they have to do that? Why do they even bother? The shaitan is intended. It's a very good question. And the answer to this is that sihr is a knowledge. If it was a simple case of asking the shaitan to go and kill that person, that would be how it was done. But instead, sihr is a knowledge. It's a science. And this is what they know. This is the science that they teach the people. And you can download, unfortunately, books of magic from the internet. Same stuff, same numbers. This is what they do. And Allah has decreed that this is how they were taught. This is how the magicians were taught. This is the knowledge that they found, whether they found it under the throne of Sulaiman, as some of the Mufassirin say, or they found it from some of the angels whom Allah sent as a test and a trial. But this is how they found it. And in reality, all of it is falsehood. In reality, none of it makes it has any real significance in terms of us as Muslims. It doesn't have any real significance. But this is what the magicians do and this is how they work. And this will help you to interpret what the ta'weed is for. First of all, this ta'weed here, what is it for? Seven stars. Seven stars. For, for? Um. To bring people together for love. It's there to burn. Why, are there, why is this stuff there to burn? The person, is fiery. the person is supposedly fiery, according to the magician. Yeah. When you find this, what should you never, ever, ever do? Burn it. MashaAllah, tabarakAllah. Why? Because this is the sihr that is designed to be activated by burning. Any sihr you find, we're going to talk about in a moment. If you don't know, tawakkul ala Allah, bismillah. Do what you have to do. But when it's clear that it's to be burnt, you don't burn it. What do you think you do instead? Recite some of the ayat over some water. Put the, uh, put the uh, ayat, put the uh, sihr from the burning and whatever into the water. If you can dry the paper out afterwards, you may be able to burn it afterwards. But you, the main thing is the bukhur, the incense and the powder needs to go in the water. Where are you going to throw the water away? Somewhere where people don't go. Somewhere, let, throw it you know, over in the corner of a park where nobody goes, in a rubbish ground, throw it somewhere where nobody goes. Just in case, just as ihtiyat, in case someone is harmed by the magic that has taken into the water, throw it away, don't put it, you know, in, in the middle of, you know, your kiddies park where all the children play, just as, you know, a precaution. I'm not saying there's an evidence from the sunnah that it will harm, but I'm just saying to you as a precaution, Put it where someone, don't throw it, you know, where someone's going to drink from it or where it's going to go be mixed into people's drinking water and stuff like that, inshallah. I'm going to have to stop the questions in the middle for the simple reason that we might not get through. I'm looking at the time. I will definitely take your question, inshallah ta'ala, after, bi'ithnillah. Keep it in your mind, okay? Okay. This is brass or metal. How do you think we're going to dispose of this? Gonna grind it or sand it down so that the letters are no longer visible. And if we wanna put it in the water, we can put it in the water, but we need to grind down the letters. So you need to take a Dremel multi-tool or a file or you know a, a piece of sandpaper and just get sanding until the letters can no longer be read. Again, this is not my opinion, it's not Muhammad Tim, Sheikh Adil bin Tahir al-Muqbil, who is our Sheikh, our expert, our expert in Removing magic, that's his job. That's, he's the senior guy in Saudi for doing this. 
So this is what he says, file it down till the papers, till the letters don't show anymore. When you have these pouches, you need to open the pouch. Pliers, scissors, open the pouch. Be careful not to drop the stuff that's in it. So you want to destroy it completely, inshallah ta'ala. How generally do we destroy then what is not to be burnt? It's not burning magic and it's not brass magic. The Shaykh, he said, we burn it while reciting over Surah Al-Fatiha and the last two so while reciting over, sorry, the last two surahs of the Quran, Al-Falaq and Al-Nas. And he uses the evidence for this, would you not have burned it? I asked the Shaykh and again, I'm repeating you what the Shaykh said. I said, Shaykh, we have some of our beloved brothers who perform Rukia and they say, don't burn the Ta'weeth because the magic may afflict you and people don't know what to burn and what not to burn. The Shaykh said, Hada jahl wa batil. He said, this is ignorance and falsehood. That's what the Shaykh said, not me. That's what the Shaykh said. You guys do what you want. That's what the Shaykh said. I'm only repeating what the Shaykh said. He said, this is ignorance and falsehood. So he said it is to be burned and he used the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Aisha, would you not have burned it? And no doubt some of our mashayikh and our ulama, from our mashayikh we love fi sabilillah, they say not to burn it and they say just to put it in the ruqya water. My advice to you is to follow the, the opinion of Sheikh Adil and you guys, you know at the end of the day, I'm not meaning disrespect to anyone, okay? People advise not to burn it. Alhamdulillah, they have their evidence and they, un they have a reason behind it. But my statement to you, Aisha radiallahu anha said, would you not have burned it? The Prophet said, Aisha, don't, don't, don't. He didn't say, Aisha, what do you mean burn it? You're going to harm the people. He just said, no, I didn't burn it because Allah Azza wa saved me from the effects and it was broken through the ruqya uh, that the Prophet was done upon him uh, and the reading that Jibreel did and what the angels did uh, and, and so on and so forth. It's very important that you also be aware of what you are burning or what you are putting in water, whatever you're doing with it, that you be aware of it. If it has things like menstrual blood on it, you're not going to recite and blow the Quran over it. So you're reciting and blowing. You can blow at the end of the surah or after every ayah. Some of the narrations suggest, and they're all weak, but they suggest the Prophet ﷺ blew after every ayah, and some of them suggest that he blew after uh, each uh, surah. In any case, you blow. As soon as you see menstrual blood, feces, you're not going to read the Quran over it. You're going to put it into the water and clean out the feces. Uh, if it's the Quran, rose water, something, you know, nice smelling to remove the feces from it and then you're going to dry it out and you're going to burn it or for those people who dislike doing so and we're going to, you know, give them their due respect then we're going to say to them that this is, uh, that this is uh, you know, for them to, uh, for do, to do they're going to leave it in the water but at the end of the day, you need to remove the impurities you don't take a sanitary towel that has menstrual blood in and say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ you don't disgrace the Quran like that, okay? As soon as you see that, you clean it, you separate the papers, you put it in the water. The other thing you need to put in the waters for certain are things where the ink is soluble, okay? When the ink is soluble, the ink is it, it, like disintegrates in water, put it in the water and make the ink wipe away, wash away, throw the water away and burn the paper if you wish to do so. You know, and, I, and I, like I said, I have mentioned that you know, that we have some of our beloved brothers who do Rukia, who don't burn and they don't advise to burn. My advice and my strong feeling and my practice and what I've always done and advised the brothers to do is to burn everything on the condition that it is not there to be burnt, as in it contains Bukhur or it contains incense, or on the condition that it's not soluble ink. The soluble ink you're going to put in the water first. And then the water as well. Falaq and Nas. If you want to read Al-Fatiha, Ayatul Kursi, it's okay. But ideally, falaq nas, falaq nas. This is what was sent to the Prophet Sallallahu to break the magic that was done to him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is a, a brief introduction, uh, really. And uh, we've seen a number of, uh, of different things. What I want to do now is to show you some of the ta'weed that Brother Abu Ibrahim has collected.
and we try to see what kind of things are written on some of them bear in mind they only have to change one letter hitta hinta one letter to disgrace the Quran some of these ta'aweed are going to be proper full on sihr some of them are going to be less than that and we got still to find time for the videos at the ends inshallah so we're going to have videos of them destroying the magic and so on and so forth see here the numbers this is probably a surah of the Quran this is probably here a surah of the Quran but we can decipher the numbers one is alif ba and then here we have abjad abjad a a so we have abjad which is the beginning of the magician's letters and then we have a a and then we have some more stuff written maybe some of these words are words from the quran and they're doing it to disgrace the words of the quran if it's three by three it's probably been done to break someone apart if not it may have been done for other reasons or simply just to disgrace the quran uh, in, and, and to seek nearness to the shaitan because not every ta'weed is the actual contract many of these ta'weed are not the contract what they are there for is they are there as a, ta, as a taqarrub to the shaitan as a, a means of seeking a qurban to the shaitan a means of sacrificing to the shaitan some of these have written on them that the woman if she's pregnant she ties it onto her left arm subhanallah look at the belief of the people Allah must have. I'm trying to find some that are clear on the screen here we see can you see it's like a diamond shape I, I'm all I'm looking at the same screen as you but I can see there's a diamond shape inside of the diamond shape there's a square these are the seals of the magician he does squares and shapes the shapes are known as the seal of the magician okay we have this one had on the corner I'll let you we share the mic inshallah. The one, one, one further down. This one in the court, this one had uh, the Quran recited in the middle, well, written in the middle, and in the corners it had Ya Jibreel, Ya Israfil, Ya Mikail, Ya Israel. So the same, the same uh, names as, as the magic. And the same names as we found where? In the English Museum of Magic in Cornwall. SubhanAllah, the same thing. Do you see the letters there, Arabic letters written around the words, disgracing the ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal. Numbers, numbers with meanings, meanings in the names of the shaitan. Ah, and then seven, whatever that is, abjad, was maybe zai. Here, and you have all of these names. They can be ayat, they can be names of the shayateen. You can decode them yourself, you can calculate them. Maybe the magician used a different system. You can find the system, you can work it out if you need to do so. Why would you need to do so? In general, you just want to get rid of it. But for times you want to do so, why? To prove to the miskeen who comes to you and says, this is Ismullah al-A'zam. This piece of paper is Allah's greatest name. The uh, brother Abu Ibrahim, he mentioned the story of the Queen of Sheba. The Ifrit who offered to take the throne was beaten by who? Who took it instead? Who brought the throne instead of the Ifrit? A man who was given knowledge of the scripture. What knowledge of the scripture was he given? The Mufassirun say he was given the knowledge of Allah's greatest name and he made dua by Allah's greatest name and the throne appeared. So he made dua and the greatest name of Allah and Allah knows best is Allah or as some of the scholars say Al-Hayyul Qayyum or Allahu La Ilaha Illahu Al-Hayyul Qayyum according to the difference of opinion amongst the scholars in this and it seems the strongest is that the name Allah is Allah's greatest name but they will tell you I have a secret Ismullah al-A'zam Allah's greatest name it was passed to my children my, my grandfather and he passed it to me the awliya of Allah this writing here this squiggle is Allah's greatest name it's not Allah's greatest name open a book Alistair Crowley names of the demons that I seek help from the same name that he says is Allah's greatest name is in the book of Alistair Crowley under names of demons that I seek help from Subhanallah, because the magicians in this country, they don't fear Allah They don't fear the people and they don't fear the sword. So they openly tell people of the magic that they do. Look at all of these symbols here in the squares. All of them based on the same thing. It's 
It's very dark, <laughs> otherwise you could see uh, there's a lot of these. All of these letters, they are not done without meaning. They have numbers. Work the letter backwards to the number. So here, take the letter and calculate the letter backwards to the number. Add the numbers up. They probably add to a number that refers to what the magic is being done for, or they refer to the name of the shayateen, or they are breaking up the ayat of Allah letter by letter. So, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ They write qaf, and then they write lam, ha, waw, hamza, ha, dal. They intend something different. They say, look, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ What they mean, the qaf is a name of a shaytan that begins with qaf. And the lam is a name of a shaytan that begins with lam. And they write their names in it. But they say, look, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ this is why we don't have these ta'weed, ya ikhwan. Look at the state of what these people do, subhanAllah. And there are loads and loads of them. Here, look at the stars. What was this one done for? Tell me straight away. Look at this and tell me what it was done for. There is bringing people together in there because the stars are there, potentially. I'll tell you the story behind this, uh, this, this amulet was, it's actually much longer. It was about actually six foot long when we, uh, it was all folded up, but we took what we could. It was actually six foot long when we unfolded it. But this brother, he's a practicing brother, but his parents had gone to a magician and this was to protect the house from, uh, from Shayateen. And it was also to, uh, to, to, to bring the family members together. Um, and when we destroyed this, after we destroyed this, the brother narrated to me that they would wake up in the morning and there would be blood smeared all over their doors uh, and of the walls of the house as well. So uh, this was the more than likely the shayateen who was sent with this contract or the shayateen that this was supposed to be protecting from and, and uh, you know who had been enforcing this. Once they had, we had destroyed the, uh, the amulet, then the shayateen were probably coming back to try and attack the brother and his family and there was blood all over the walls etc. Okay, we continue. Circles, how many, can you see inside the circle? Nine, box of nine. Inside the circle there's a box of nine squares. It was done to break a family apart or to seal the breaking inside of a circle. So to break a certain part of the family apart but not another part of the family. And we keep going and going and going. We have a wide collection. What I want to do in a moment is to go just to the videos to finish off because the videos have some stuff in that you may come across. Are there any particular ones you want to come? No. Okay. We go to the videos. There was one that last second which just says, "Please." Where is that? Where is that one? If I put it on my computer, we put it. They're so clear, subhanallah, on the computer, right? I'm just going to pick a few to show you. This one here. You can see the writing is soluble ink. It's light pink, it's soluble ink. So it needs to be put in the water and washed off before you get rid of it. Okay, that's one. Uh, I'm just gonna go back here and just see if I <coughs> pick out some certain ones for you. This one here, you can see there, can you see the squares? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's done to break up something, to push something away, to push somebody away. Have a look at this one, Yaikhwan. It's very, very difficult to see, but it's full of these words. What does that say? Iblis. Iblis, 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 Iblis. That poor miskeen person was probably told that that thing around their neck was Surah Al-Fatiha and Ayatul Kursi. I have Ayatul Kursi around my neck. It's my belief. It's Ayatul Kursi. Iblis, 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 Iblis. Subhanallah. This also looks like the it looks like a noose, but they, they draw things. I think they've written like, it's as though they've written a, a khatam, a type of a seal, which is an open-ended circle or a ha. And inside of it, they've written the word Iblis and part of it is open. So Allah knows best what they intend by it. Let's go quickly just to finish off in the next five minutes, very, very, very quickly before we begin the salah regarding some of the videos of destroying the magic and the magic that was done. I'll try and show you the most important first because I presume that we're gonna run out of time. Okay. 
They're opening a box. And in the box, what we're going to see? Yeah, not a lot, because you can see it very clear on the computer. You've got eggs in there. You've got bits of uh, material, bits of cloth. Uh, you have a knife or a, or a pin stuck through uh, the inside of the bird. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? What would be easier is to move it on to here and just to describe you what we have. So we have a dead, a dead uh, bird and the bird between the inside of the cavity of the bird and behind the wing of the bird there is something stitched onto it. We have eggs. One, two, three, plain white eggs. Four, five, six, seven. Now what do we have? Seven eggs. Seven eggs go in the box. Two more eggs, hold on, we've got two or three. Four. That makes eleven. And now we have some knives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven knives. Eight knives, nine knives, ten knives, eleven knives. Eleven eggs, eleven knives. Someone's trying to kill somebody. Razor blades, sorry, pins, needles, not razor blades. One, two razor blades, three razor blades, four razor blades, five razor blades, six razor blades, seven razor blades, eight, still going, nine, <coughs> ten. We have a box full, a bag full of stuff that looks like, it looks like lentils or some kind of, uh, something like that, that it's buried in. And they're still picking out razor blades to make up 11 and pins. Now they've got 11 pins. So how all the numbers match up together, okay? Um, this is nice and bright, so I, I hope that this will show relatively well on the screen. They're destroying a ta'weez. Don't worry about not seeing this too much, guys. We will, imp we will overwrite it on the videos on YouTube. You'll be able to see it very, very clearly, inshallah ta'ala. It's nice and clear on the screen. It's just the projector uh, and the light from outside makes it difficult to see. So they're opening up the ta'weez. And all the time they're opening it up, what are they doing? قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Blowing on it, yeah? All the time. They're opening this uh, pouch up. Many times, they, they said they couldn't open it up. Many times, I've not been able to burn a paper. It will not burn. I doused it in petrol, set it alight, it wouldn't burn. Till you read Al-Falaq and Al-Nas over it, and then it burns. These are... Little, little, I think, uh, pieces of paper. As he's opening it, what's he going to find inside? Start to see the khatam, the seal of the magician in there. Rope. When there are knots, you must cut the knots. You must open and cut the knots, okay? Each knot, take a razor blade. Get yourself in your ta'weez kit, in your, we're gonna talk about the kit that the Raqi has tomorrow. Razor blades. Take a razor blade, cut each individual knot open and blow on it. What's inside? see all of the writing on there and that's one ta'weed that is 
opened. They have plenty of, uh, of the examples in here. We're going to try and forward maybe to one more very quickly. This is them washing the uh, soluble ink, saffron ink or whatever it is, sometimes urine. They're washing it in the bowl of water that's been recited upon, then they're going to dry out the paper and they're going to burn the paper. In general, guys, we have a lot still to cover, but it's now time for Salatul Asr, insha'Allah ta'ala. So what we're going to do is, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, the whole videos will be obviously inserted for you. And tomorrow, insha'Allah, we'll see what we can do, obviously, about the projector screen. But, you know, insha'Allah, whatever, whatever we're able to do, we will do. And if not, then insha'Allah, you'll be given the videos even on CD or something, or we can even give USBs or put them online somewhere. Uh, YouTube links or whatever for you to watch them inshallah so that you can be aware of what you're seeing ta'ala, and if possible I'll over translate them I'll, I'll do voiceovers so you can hear what the person who is opening the ta'weed is saying tomorrow we have to talk one more theory topic about the evil eye and then we're going to go on to introduction to Rukia the Raqi and the family the Rukia session and we may we are trying to organize a live Rukia session bi'idhnillahi ta'ala for you guys with someone who does have an affliction or a problem so that inshallah ta'ala you guys can get some real practical experience and now that we've removed the fear of the shaitan with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal from everyone and nobody's scared of the jinn anymore inshallah there'll be no concern over you attending a rukia session where uh, some of the jinn will be also in attendance inshallah let's break for asr inshallah and we wrap it up there jazakumullahu khairan ya ikhwan you've been very very patient uh, the weather hasn't helped. It's been lovely weather, but difficult. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from all of us. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.